Chapter 8 In those days when there was again a great multitude, and they had nothing to eat, he called unto him his disciples, and saith unto them, I have compassion on the multitude, because they continue with me now three days, and have nothing to eat. And if I send them away fasting to their home, they will faint on the way, and some of them are come from far. And his disciples answered him, Whence shall one be able to fill these men with bread here in a desert place? And he asked them, How many loaves have ye? And they said, Seven. And he commandeth the multitude to sit down on the ground. And he took the seven loaves, and having given thanks, he brake, and gave to his disciples to set before them. And they set them before the multitude. And they had a few small fishes, and having blessed them, he commanded to set these also before them. And they ate and were filled, and they took up of broken pieces that remained over seven baskets. And they were about four thousand, and he sent them away. And straightway he entered into the boat with his disciples, and came into the parts of Dalmanutha. And the Pharisees came forth, and began to question with him, seeking of him a sign from heaven, trying him. And he sighed deeply in his spirit, and saith, Why doth this generation seek a sign? Verily I say unto you, There shall no sign be given unto this generation. And he left them, and again entering into the boat, departed to the other side. And they forgot to take bread, and they had not in the boat with them more than one loaf. And he charged them, saying, Take heed, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees, and the leaven of Herod. And they reasoned one with another, saying, We have no bread. And Jesus, perceiving it, saith unto them, Why reason ye, because ye have no bread? Do ye not yet perceive, neither understand? Have ye your heart hardened? Having eyes see ye not, and having ears hear ye not? And do ye not remember? When I break the five loaves among the five thousand, how many baskets full of broken pieces took ye up? They say unto him, Twelve. And when the seven among the four thousand, how many basketfuls of broken pieces took ye up? And they say unto him, Seven. And he said unto them, Do ye not yet understand? And they come unto Bethsaida, and they bring to him a blind man, and beseech him to touch him. And he took hold of the blind man by the hand, and brought him out of the village. And when he had spit on his eyes, and laid his hands upon him, he asked him, Seest thou aught? And he looked up and said, I see men, for I behold them as trees walking. Then again he laid his hands upon his eyes, and he looked steadfastly, and was restored, and saw all things clearly. And he sent him away to his home, saying, Do not even enter into the village. And Jesus went forth and his disciples into the villages of Caesarea Philippi. And on the way he asked his disciples, saying unto them, Who do men say that I am? And they told him, saying, John the Baptist, and others Elijah, but others one of the prophets. And he asked them, But who say ye that I am? Peter answereth and saith unto him, Thou art the Christ. And he charged them that they should tell no man of him. And he began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things, and be rejected by the elders, and the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. And he spake the saying openly, and Peter took him and began to rebuke him. 
But he, turning about, and seeing his disciples, rebuked Peter, and saith, Get thee behind me, Satan, for thou mindest not the things of God, but the things of men. And he called unto him the multitude with his disciples, and said unto them, If any man would come after me, let him deny himself, and take up his cross, and follow me. For whosoever would save his life shall lose it, and whosoever shall lose his life for my sake, and the gospel's, shall save it. For what doth it profit a man to gain the whole world and forfeit his life? For what should a man give in exchange for his life? For whosoever shall be ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, the Son of Man also shall be ashamed of him when he cometh in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. End of chapter 8 Chapter 9 And he said unto them, Verily I say unto you, There are some here of them that stand by, who shall in no wise taste of death, till they see the kingdom of God come with power. And after six days Jesus taketh with him Peter and James and John, and bringeth them up into a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his garments became glistering, exceeding white, so as no fuller on earth can whiten them. And there appeared unto them Elijah with Moses, and they were talking with Jesus. And Peter answereth and saith to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here, and let us make three tabernacles, one for thee, and one for Moses, and one for Elijah. For he knew not what to answer, for they became sore afraid. And there came a cloud overshadowing them, and there came a voice out of the cloud, This is my beloved Son, hear ye him. And suddenly looking round about, they saw no one any more save Jesus only with themselves. And as they were coming down from the mountain, he charged them that they should tell no man what things they had seen, save when the Son of Man should have risen again from the dead. And they kept the saying, questioning among themselves what the rising again from the dead should mean. And they asked him, saying, How is it that the scribes say that Elijah must first come? And he said unto them, Elijah indeed cometh first, and restoreth all things. And how is it written of the Son of Man, that he should suffer many things, and be set at naught? But I say unto you, that Elijah is come, and they have also done unto him whatsoever they would, even as it is written of him. And when they came to the disciples, they saw a great multitude about them, and scribes questioning with them. And straightway all the multitude, when they saw him, were greatly amazed, and running to him saluted him. And he asked them, What question ye with them? And one of the multitude answered him, Teacher, I brought unto thee my son, who hath a dumb spirit and wheresoever it taketh him, it dasheth him down, and he foameth, and grindeth his teeth, and pineth away. And I spake to thy disciples that they should cast it out, and they were not able. And he answereth them, and saith, O faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I bear with you? Bring him unto me. And they brought him unto him, and when he saw him, straightway the spirit tear him grievously, and he fell on the ground and wallowed foaming. And he asked his father, How long time is it since this hath come unto him? And he said, From a child, and oft times 
it hath cast him both into the fire and into the waters to destroy him but if thou canst do anything have compassion on us and help us and jesus said unto him if thou canst all things are possible to him that believeth straightway the father of the child cried out and said i believe help thou mine unbelief and when jesus saw that a multitude came running together he rebuked the unclean spirit saying unto him thou dumb and deaf spirit i command thee come out of him and enter no more into him and having cried out and torn him much he came out and the boy became as one dead insomuch that the more part said he is dead but jesus took him by the hand and raised him up and he arose and when he was come into the house his disciples asked him privately how is it that we could not cast it out and he said unto them this kind can come out by nothing save by prayer and they went forth from thence and passed through galilee and he would not that any man should know it for he taught his disciples and said unto them the son of man is delivered up into the hands of men and they shall kill him and when he is killed after three days he shall rise again but they understood not the saying and were afraid to ask him and they came to capernaum and when he was in the house he asked them what were ye reasoning on the way but they held their peace for they had disputed one with another on the way who was the greatest and he sat down and called the twelve and he saith unto them if any man would be first he shall be last of all and servant of all and he took a little child and set him in the midst of them and taking him in his arms he said unto them whosoever shall receive one of such little children in my name receiveth me and whosoever receiveth me receiveth not me but him that sent me john said unto him teacher we saw one casting out demons in thy name and we forbade him because he followed not us but jesus said forbid him not for there is no man who shall do a mighty work in my name and be able quickly to speak evil of me for he that is not against us is for us for whosoever shall give you a cup of water to drink because ye are christ's verily i say unto you he shall in no wise lose his reward and whosoever shall cause one of these little ones that believe on me to stumble it were better for him if a great millstone were hanged about his neck and he were cast into the sea and if thy hand cause thee to stumble cut it off it is good for thee to enter into life maimed rather than having thy two hands to go into hell into the unquenchable fire and if thy foot cause thee to stumble cut it off it is good for thee to enter into life halt rather than having thy two feet to be cast into hell and if thine eye cause thee to stumble cast it out it is good for thee to enter into the kingdom of god with one eye rather than having two eyes to be cast into hell where there worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched for every one shall be salted with fire salt is good but if the salt have lost its saltness wherewith will ye season it have salt in yourselves and be at peace one with another end of chapter nine